sweet heart. Yes, sir, for Cristiano Ronaldo, Kitney girlfriends. We should learn the names of the great companions. You know, Abhi, Ramadan is coming. Shuhadai Badr. How many companions were martyred in Badr? Anyone? 14 companions were martyred in the Battle of Badr. Their names have been listed. Sufiya Ikram, Ulama Ikram, Mashaykh, great scholars of Islam have mentioned that in time of in times of need, in times of need, you should make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you should mention the names of Shuhadai Badr as Mark. And your duas will be accepted. These were those people in the Battle of Badr, they were martyred, were shaheed away. Fourteen of them. Shuhadai Badr. So Hazrat Abu Zar Ghifar is a great companion of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa and he's an Arab. So one side you have Hazrat Bilal, he's an African. On the other side you have Hazrat Abu Zar Ghifar, he's an Arab. I'm talking about how Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa purified their hearts. No discrimination, no racism, nothing. Allah Akbar. Today you see football players when they're playing on the field, they got their band. What's written there? Say, say no to racism. That's what's written, isn't it? Say no to 14 centuries ago, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, through his akhlaq and character, taught us, say no to racism. And I'm going to give you this work, a very beautiful. Every time I mention this, it touches my heart. So Hazrat Bilal Habshi radiallahu ta'ala and Hazrat Abu Zar Ghifari were seated. Some other companions were also there and they were having a discussion. So Hazrat Abu Zar Ghifari said something. And Hazrat Bilal Habshi said that, oh Abu Zar, I disagree with you. We get together, we have a discussion, I say, no, I disagree with you. You disagree with me, I disagree. So he says, Hazrat, who's saying this? An African man, a black man. Hazrat Bilal is saying to Hazrat Abu Zar, an Arab, that I disagree with you. When Hazrat Abu Zar Ghifari heard this, he only said one thing. He says, oh Bilal, Allah He says, oh Bilal, you disagree with me? You are a son of a black woman. How can you disagree? Allah Hazrat Bilal Habshi radiallahu ta'ala got up and he left the gathering. He came to Rasulullah. Sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. He says, Ya Rasulullah. And he had tears in his eyes. He says, Ya Rasulullah, this is what happened. We were in a discussion and I said to Hazrat Abu Zar, I disagree with you. And he said to me, did, Let me ask you, my respected brothers and sisters, did Hazrat Abu Zar Ghifari swear Hazrat Bilal? And I'm an Indian. So if you said to me, Molana, you are a son of an Indian woman. Wo gali hai? Is that a gali? No. Oh. Hakika, the reality hai? Reality hai. My mother is Indian. My father is Indian. So Hazrat, Hazrat Abu Zarifari, what did he say to Hazrat Bilal? He said that you are a son of a black woman. Well, Hazrat Bilal actually is a son of a black woman, isn't it? But look at that. That was against the akhlaq of Rasulullah. So Hazrat Bilal left the gathering, came to Rasulullah with tears in his eyes and said, Ya Rasulullah, this is what happened. The Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Oh Bilal, go call Abu Zar. Now Abu Zar comes to the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam didn't say anything. He only said one thing. He said, Oh Abu Zar, whatever you said to Bilal, what did you say to Bilal? That he is a son of a black woman, say the very same thing to me. Say the very same thing to me. One of the foster mothers of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is Hazrat Umm Ayman. Remember this name. Foster mother of the greatest creation of Allah. That personality upon whose kalbe at her blessed heart, 30 paras of the Holy Quran were revealed. Foster mother, Hazrat Umm Ayman. And she was an African woman. She was also black. So the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, that, oh Abu Zar, what you said to Bilal, say the very same thing to me. Why? Because Umme Aman, who is an African, a black woman, she is also my mother. Who may be mine. When Hazrat Abu Zar Ghifari, now, Hazrat Bilal had tears in his eyes. Rasulullah Sam had tears in his eyes. Hazrat Abu Zar Ghifari now has tears in his eyes. And he says to Hazrat Bilal, forgive me. We break people's hearts. And that's an honor for us. We go bragging about it. I said this to him and I said that to him. You know, Molana, hey, hey, I shut him up. You're reading Namaz behind Molana, I shut Molana up. Hey, he was saying this, I told him, Chupra, keep quiet. You don't know this, you don't know that. We brag about it. We, we, we want people to compliment us on our dirty akhlaq and character. 
Look at the akhlaq and character of the companions. Hazrat Abu Zarqifari radiallahu ta'ala with, with tears in his eyes, he said to Hazrat Bilal, Oh Bilal, please forgive me. I shouldn't have said what I said to you. Hazrat Bilal said, no, I forgive you. Hazrat Abu Zarqifari said, no, no, no. Istara name. Istara, not like this. So many Sahaba Ikram have narrated this narration and it has reached us today. Mu'ana Nadim is mentioning this to you on the 27th of Jan 2024. If it was done behind closed doors, we wouldn't know. Hazrat Abu Zarqifari said, not like this, O Bilal. I want the entire Medina to see what I did and how I'm asking for mafi for forgiveness. He said, he comes in the gullies of Medina, Hazrat Abu Zarqifari, and he lies down. He puts himself on the ground and he says to Hazrat Bilal, what you do is you take your foot and place it on my face and say that, O oh, Abu Zar, I forgive you. This is how you, why you zakki him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, my Habib, my messenger, will purify the hearts. Imagine, he puts himself on the ground and he says what? Place your foot on my face and then say, Hazrat Bilal said, how can I do that, O oh, Abu Zar? You are my Muslim brother. Come, Huzur, we are companions of Rasulullah. We need namaz behind Rasulullah, sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. You are my Muslim brother. I say, no, no. This is how you're going to do it. And Hazrat Bilal actually had no other option. So he places, slightly he placed his feet, his foot on the face of Hazrat Abu Zarqifari. Allah forgive you. Allah Akbar. Ye hai sahabai That is why we remember that. That is why we say that, that they are the stars of hidayat and guidance. Nujumul huda. Nujumul hidayah. Shining stars of Islam. The companions of Rasulullah. Sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the tawfiq and hidayah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala purify our hearts. Purify our akhlaq and our character. Very, very important for 40 years. How old was Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? My respected brothers and sisters, you know this. When the first revelation came to him, how old was he? He was 40 years old. But when you look at the sirat of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, from the time he was born till the time he was placed in his qabr anwar, every moment in the sirat of Rasulullah is nasihat, inspiration for us, for the ummah of Rasulullah. But the first revelation came to him when he was 40 years old. So for 40 years, what did he preach? What did he teach the Ummah for 40 years? Good akhlaq and character. Good akhlaq and character. Read, read the Sirat of the great companions. Read the Sirat of the Ahle Bayt and the family of Rasulullah. They give preference to others over themselves. Teen, teen, char, char, teen. Who care? They would be hungry for days. But if a sail, a beggar came knocking on the door and they had that one plate of food, and I'm not talking about dal, ghost, and biryani here. I'm just talking about what? A few dates. Sattu, you know sattu? Sattu is more like porridge. And not in milk also, pani can and water. Sattu hai, a few dates, uh, uh, water. That used to be their, their food. And for two, three days they were hungry, and a sail, Someone comes and a beggar knocks on the door and they would give that away. That is why till today they are remembered. Today when we mention the what do you say? Radi Allah ta'ala an. What does that mean? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pleased with them. Abu Bakr radi Allah ta'ala an. Umar radi Allah ta'ala an. Uthman radi Allah ta'ala an. Ali radi Allah. Meaning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pleased with them. They are pleased with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Holy Quran says, Allah is pleased with them. Allah will say khushah. Allah is pleased with them. Imagine what a certificate is this from the divine court of Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, I am pleased with Abu Bakr. I am pleased with Umar. I am pleased with Bilal. I am pleased with Abu Zar Ghifari. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the tawfiq and hidayah to follow in their footsteps. It is a mafil dedicated to a mother also. Allah give us tawfiq and hidayah also our parents, especially if they're in old age. You see when, like now I have my son, my son is six years old. I've been told my young one, alhamdulillah. I always tell people, mashallah, that if you want to see, I can take off my topi also. Yeah, I'll be Kali dari hai, kala baal hai, black hai, nothing is grey. So I don't need my son to do khidmat for me now. I am fit, alhamdulillah, I'm healthy, I'm young. Especially when our parents are in old age. It's an opportunity for us, yeah. 
Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has mentioned hadith in Mubarakah, mafhum summary of the hadith is that when children find their parents in old age, it's an opportunity for them to earn Jannat. To earn Jannat, it's an opportunity. Allah has given an opportunity. You want Jannat? You want Jannat? You want khair and goodness in this world as well as in the hereafter? Every time you make the Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana. Oh Allah bless me with goodness. Khair hasana in this world. Wa fil akhirati hasana. And khair and goodness hasana in the hereafter. It is an opportunity for us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, your parents are in old age. Maki qadmo ki niche jannat hai. I want to recite a few ashar of this beautiful kalam dedicated to all our mothers. Bil khusus especially to Marhuma Makfura, Safiya Begum Ismail, Amari Ashraf Bhaiki Marhuma Walida, mother, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, fill her cover with noor and make it noorun ala noor. And this, this kalam is dedicated to all our mothers. Maki kya shaan hai, Allah wa Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Al jannatu tahta aqdamil ummahat. <clears throat> this is a hadith that we have heard quite often. And we all we know the hadith also that Jannat is under the feet of our, our mothers. Maki Kadmu ki niche jannat hai. What do we say? We say ki my mother is my jannat, alhamdulillah, that's an expression. We also say Maki dua jannat ki hawa. Maki dua jannat ki hawa. Miri ma miri jannat hai. My mother is my jannat. But try to understand what Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said. The Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam didn't say, your mother is your jannat. O oh, maki dua jannat ki hawa. No. What is the hadith saying? The hadith is saying, al jannatu tahta aqdari ummahat. Ki jannat is under the feet of your mother. Under the feet of your mother. Meaning, Jannat is greater, uh, mother is greater than Jannat. Jannat is under the feet. It is not in the level of the mother. Allahu Akbar. Ma itni bari nemat hai. Jannat itself is a great nemat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But mother is a greater nemat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala than Jannat. Because Jannat is under the feet of. Now we see in our communities, Sheikh Saab comes, Hazrat Saab comes, Peer Saab comes. You know, we have our affiliations that spiritual link and connection. And if Hazrat is coming and because it's an Indian community, most of our share, Peer Sahib, Hazrat.